All right, going forward. Oops. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Let me try and go forward. Um, okay, introduction, welcome. Here's our six points that I'm going to try to get to today. I'm going to talk about the essay's role in admissions. Um, I have some data for you that supports why this is so important. Not probably surprising to you because you've signed up to be here, but it's um, a fascinating few pieces of information that will help you understand why and who says it. Number two, what the essay must accomplish. I boil it down to three points and also what you want to avoid as some guidelines. Number three is the bulk of this presentation, how to do it. How do you target the two most important elements, content and structure, which come down to, for me, working with students in writing, having a very good thesis, of course, always the heartbeat of your essay. And then once you have a heartbeat, how do, how do you outline effectively to move yourself forward with direction? Really good thesis and really good outline and really good brainstorming will bring you to a better place. Then number four, and these are smaller tidbits, uh, sections, strategic bonus nuggets to up-level your panache. And um, we're gonna talk about revision and feedback. And then at the end, I do have resources for you um, that I reference throughout. And there are hot links there and that will all be available to you to look at later and resource for your own um, to, your, to your wish and desire. And then we'll have some Q&A at the end. I'm sure we'll have time for that. Okay, we're gonna get started to unlock a memorable essay to celebrate your students' wow factor. You'll see that a lot in yellow and hot red. Haha. -ha. How important is the college essay? Number one. Yeah, if we had a crystal ball, that'd be awesome. I do keep a crazy eight nearby. Oh, I should have had it as a prop. But needless to say, we know some things because the National Association of College Admission Counselors, these are people who are trained and who run the admissions offices, they report and they tell us what they look for and why. So going on some very, very clear data that they give us, we then can, we then can understand why is it important? Let's look. Did you know that the college essay ranks ahead of recommendations, which are college counselor and teacher X, the extracurricular activities, so all the time your kids spend on fields and in, in clubs, as well as work experience. The college essay is more important to the colleges than these, all of these. So the answer is very important. It's the fourth or fifth most significant determinant to admissions, only behind transcript components and scholastic data. What does that look like? If there were five things, the first three are your child's academics, not surprising. GPA, usually weighted. This is what we talk about in short format. You can look, the data will be presented to you. You can check it out later. But the GPA, number one, very most important. Number two, the, the rigor and the course your child takes, honors, APs, of course, this bumps up your, your, your quota, your number. And number three is the school that they go to. If it's a very challenging school, you get bumps up uh, points for that too. So those three things kind of amalgamate into a super score. And then the fourth most important thing, a little bit controversial, is the SAT or ACT. I think everybody knows in this, this isn't really the time or place to get into that topic, but the ACT and SAT are wavering in popularity and strength. So needless to say, it is still an option for you to report a lot of the time. It still, it, it still matters, but that's a complicated situation. But anyway, the fifth most important is this essay, fourth or fifth, depending on if you're using SAT and you'll just, if, if you can live with the fourth or fifth, then that's good. Here is a great chart. I love this chart. If you see at the bottom of the screen, this is the NAC, NACAC, it's called National Association of College Admissions Counselors, who reported this trend in 2017 or 18, which I know feels like a long time ago, but they don't meet annually. I think they meet, I don't know, every five years. I'm not sure. I'm not part of the NACAC because I don't do college admissions. I do this. But you can see the essay or writing sample is the here fifth most important element. Um, and the SAT was third, but it has fallen, uh, most would agree. And this data gives us a lot of information and confirms what we believe, that you get a chance to write a college essay that can really make a difference. Again, the links are at the end if you want this um, data. So think of it as your thumbprint, and it is the only element you can control and impact. So think about of all of your application, you get to say what you wanna say here the way you wanna say it. 
and in no other way and no other form format do you have that opportunity. So pretty cool, pretty important. Okay, so before I move into uh, what your essay must accomplish and how, um, Lori, uh, here's a here's a break point before we go to section two. If there's anything pressing in the chat box, or we just move forward. I think that we are good to go forward. Awesome. Okay. All right. What must your essay accomplish and how? I'm going to try and break this down. I love breaking down problems of writing so that you have a clear path that is simplified. So I look at this as saying, you've got three key elements that your essay needs to address. Number one, pretty basic, but pretty important. Who, who is this kid? Who are you? So you have an opportunity to introduce yourself. Choose wisely. Choose number two. Choose what asset, value, interest, or skill you will bring to the campus. And number three, can you write and can you write well? So who are you? What are you gonna bring to campus that's awesome? And what are you gonna, how are you gonna write it? And what does that say about your writing proficiency, your writing skill, your style, your panache? So I tell students, I want you to think of what you have to do and how, how is the, you have to woo and wow in 650 words or less. What does that mean? So in a page and a half for the, for the common app, the wooing is seducing or entrapping your audience with thrill or engagement. You want to woo them. You want to lure them in. The wow, jazz hands, you want to give them something that they want on their campus in under 650 words. So a couple of things to think about avoiding, all of which have come across my experience so let's talk about, there's six things I like to mention as these are not the best ideas. So these are avoid, these are do not do. Number one, your COVID problems or a COVID rant. The Common App has a specific designated additional optional section, 250 words or less, which is like a good size little paragraph where you can address this in any way you want. There's a lot of information about what to do with that COVID optional essay. And look at it this way. It's another opportunity to show your writing. You might wanna take advantage of it, but only probably if you have something really worth saying instead of, yeah, COVID was really crappy for me. Yeah, we know, everybody knows. So there's, in the Common App, they actually talk to specifics about what they're interested in hearing. And I'm not going to go over that today because that's a supplemental and we're really here focusing on the, the, the personal essay or the common apps um, college essay. So, but there's a lot of information on that and um, needless to say, your essay should not focus on COVID problems. Number two, your winning is touchdown, your winning is goal. Sports as a topic is controversial because the National Association of College Admission Counselors are saying we are so tired of hearing about sports. So please tread lightly, uh, if at all, if you can avoid it. So think about how else you can introduce yourself. Um, number three, I've had a student say, I want to, I love shooting squirrels. And I had another one, I'm a kleptomaniac. So these are controversial. Um, you have to ask yourself if you think you're doing something unusual and you want to write about something unusual, what is the skill you are offering take to campus? Shooting squirrels, dubious value to a college. Same thing with kleptomania. So consider what you can avoid. My last three, uh, if you have a relative, a deceased relative, or a dog, or cat, who was the best, remember that describing another living person, being, pet, they aren't going to college. You are. So you kind of want to stay away from overly focusing on someone else because this is your introduction to you. Think about it. Um, you wanna be careful of wanderlust is my destiny or I love yachting or um, horse, horse farm. My horse farm is fabulous. The, the concept of privilege is something that is touchy and should be mindfully uh, approached. 
And then the last would be, if you've won all the science Olympiads and all the math Olympiads and all of the yada whatevers, you, you know, they, they know this because it's in your transcript. It is documented. Most likely the teacher recommendations you've chosen, they're writing about it because it's connected or your college counselor will write about it. So here in this personal essay, it's called the personal essay because they wanna get to know you as a person. And you don't have to worry about proving yourself academically in that fashion here, avoid it. You don't need to, don't do something more about what, who you really are. Okay. Lori, do we have any Q&A? Because I want to move on to content and structure. This is the, the big part of this lecture. I think we are up to date and can go ahead. Okay, you guys are awesome. I'm breezing through. Are we on time? Oh, very good. All right, so this picture is a cave drawing. It's actually a cave drawing and a cave that I've been to in Sweetwater, Colorado. Um, it's pretty fantastical. I think even though it's very washed out and very, very, very ancient, you get the sense that there's drama and tension and warring going on and there's a story here. So when it comes to looking at content and structure of your essay, there are different ways to write your personal statement, but I will tell you that my experience profoundly directs most kids are coming to me and telling a narrative. Why? We as human beings have been telling stories like this, buffalo and horse and men and women probably, we've been telling stories throughout since the beginning of our ability to communicate effectively. So the narrative is the obvious choice and is a comfort level place. So not only are we accustomed to telling stories, we, 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 we talk about what we did at the mall, we talk about what we did in English class, but the what the beauty is, is the National Association of College Admissions Counselors those people reading these essays also love stories. So it's a nice, beautiful, safe space that we're very comfortable in. Common application, and I would say to my students, wait before you look. There are seven questions. They have updated them uh, this year. There's a new one about being thankful. But of the seven questions, I always say to students, wait. Don't dive in and perseverate and really overly focus on what the questions are asking. Instead, first, select your asset value, interest, or skill that you are particularly proud of, that really resonates with you as a person, that is you, that makes you awesome. Second, identify a connected learning or growing experience that is perfect for university, that will play to their opportunities. Then, you write your essay, and then you can choose which common app essay topic you prefer because it will answer at minimum two. The seventh question is write about anything you want, which is a little tricky because you don't wanna write about toenail fungus or maybe you do. I'm trying to think of a way to shorthand the answer for number seven, but you wanna be careful what you're doing with your common application. Remember this, you are writing to introduce yourself in a handshake to a college, to sell yourself, to market yourself. So find your asset, show that you learned and grew. That's what colleges want. That's their business. They're in the business of growing and learning and they want people with talents. They want the wow. So I would not worry about the common app seven questions. You wanna write your story. Where do we start? Here's the brainstorm number one. This is a superb activity that will take you less than five minutes. Who doesn't love that? The college essay guy, genius, we love Ethan. Ethan Sawyer, who's been doing this for many moons and who I work with and for in, in a capacity that I volunteer. He gives his resources away. Awesome. These resources are here for you. I have links at the end. CEG stands for college essay guy. This is called the values exercise. So this helpful activity gets you to think about your unique and meaningful wow factor by giving a list of assets, values, interests, and skills. I find that before I use this list, I would say to a kid, well, what's so awesome about you? And we, we, we often struggle to identify what is incredible about ourselves. We're either modest or, or, or who knows, but this list is giving you an opportunity to say, oh, I really love an, um, autonomy and risk and uh, quality relationship. And it gives you a great place to go. It gets you on the target. 
highly recommend. I love it. It's like gold. Here, I'm going to take you through in this um, slideshow a student sample. And this is where we're going to start. This is where I start with all my students. I say, go through that list and make me choose five. Choose five things about yourself, the core of your identity that you're proud about. And let's put them on the paper. Literally, we're in a Google Doc and they put them in the Google Doc. So I say, please, would you rank them? And then I go in and talk about each one. So this student sample that we'll, we'll, we'll see from start to finish, she talks about giving, being she's giving, she's generous, she's patient, she's thankful, she's adaptive. Awesome, who doesn't want her? Exactly, right? All of us have things to celebrate. So find them and that starts our content, our content search. When I get these down, I then brainstorm with the student, tell me about your giving. And I literally am typing everything they're saying, never really knowing where they're gonna go with it, but they do, you do. It's, you're proud about the fact that you're a very giving person. Share that, that could be the story. It could be that you're generous. Ooh, look, giving and generosity go together. So maybe they combine. It is rare because you're so limited in space that you're gonna have more than two connected traits or asset value, skill, or interest, two wows. Um, be careful of how much you feel you want to reveal because telling a story, it's very short. Just keep that in mind. So once we have that, um, those elements, then I say to the student, okay, let, where did they come from? How did you get to be so generous and caring and la-di-da? So we're looking for a learning and growing experience that brought these assets to the forefront or helped them grow their assets, help bring them to light. What I also want students to know is this is not, a learning and growing experience is not the same as an earth shattering, cataclysmic life altering event. And it is not necessarily the fact that you've survived cancer, saved a baby or hiked Mount Everest all in one summer. What I want you to think about for learning and growing experience that contributes to your growth and development is what is meaningful and significant to you. What do you really care about? So sometimes it's pretty common and real or realistic. Could be an event that you went through, an occurrence that happened, an opportunity that you took advantage of. It does not have to be earth shattering. It needs to be meaningful. So of course I use an exercise for this as brainstorming work, super helpful to break it down. This grid is from the college essay guys, feelings and needs exercise. Again, the link is in at the end. Um, here's what I put into my Google doc. And this is that sample student we saw earlier who's very giving and generous. Here's what she wanted to talk about. And, and she didn't think this was gonna be a very good story by the way. But she says, well, I didn't, I haven't really like climbed Mount Everest. Nothing really exciting happened to me. But I said, how did you get to be generous and caring? And this is her story. She said, my sister, if you can look under the challenge category, this is the learning and growing experience challenges us. My sister had a life-changing anxiety attack when we went to get our ears pierced when we were little. And she spent years struggling to do normal things. What did that affect me? How did that affect me? My family was crippled and had to make a million changes to our lifestyle to support Beth, the sister. The feelings she had, scared, confused, worried, tired. That created needs. I needed clarity on how to move forward because of my sister's situation. I wanted to know how long this would last and what would be best for Beth. I needed these things answered. But the two blue columns at the end, this is where things get really interesting because it starts talking about how your of value to the college community. What did you do about it? And what learning takeaway did you experience? What's the so what? So what did she do about it? She moved into Beth's room. She took over chores. She became a quiet leader for others with social anxieties. She joined a peer mediation club. And what was the takeaway? What, so what? She found out, this student found out, oh, well, I have, I'm a little bit of a good leader. And I have abilities to reach out to those who are you know, more quiet and lost because I'm I understand those people. Um, I wanted to improve my community by offering that kind of help. Um, I think I, I think I want to become a nurse or a doctor, something in the medical field. So we go through this, which takes about five to 15 minutes, depending. Breaking it down helps you organize your thoughts. 
the, again, the best brainstorming and the best outlining produces the best essays always. So we do this and then we move forward. And the next thing I wanna talk about in the content and structure department is making sure you have a thesis where you select your content. And again, uh, Lori, if we have anyone who has a burning question. We do know. have a question. Um, Ooh, we have a question from Dan. Does it help if your story is relatable to the audience? If yes, how would you determine what that would be? Dan, thanks. That question's a good one. It's a little broad. Your audience, remember you're applying to get into university. So you have to imagine the person reading this specific, you are writing specifically to showcase what's awesome about you that you're gonna take to the university. So. Again, you don't want to say you're really good at shooting squirrels because they're not really interested in having a squirrel shooter um, on campus. Uh, you do want to, to talk about gifts that you are using and that you, you feel very proud about that are relatable and translatable to that university environment. I hope that makes sense. And we also have a question from Julia. Um, can you post yeah. that keyword list of values again? Yes, Julia, all of these are links at the end of this um, workshop that should make it really super easy for you to find. I have so many resources, well, not millions, but I have all the resources that I'm referencing are available to you. Happy to, happy to share. So is the college essay guy. I give him all the props. Great. We're all caught up on the questions. Thanks, guys. Okay. So now, now that you've taken the values exercise, and you've, I, you're really looking at how do I identify what matters to me? And then you start trying to connect it to where did that come from? What's a learning and growing experience that impacted me that's meaningful? Now we are gonna look at, okay, let's write a thesis because the best way forward is to have the dead center of the target, just like this bullseye on the, on the um, hmm, I forget what that thing is called. I'm so dartboard. like caught it's off guard. Dartboard. dartboard, thank you, Lori, I'm like derp. Okay, let's get a thesis going. Okay, so first again, you've selected your wow. You've got an asset or a value or skill or interest that you're very proud of from that values exercise. Super easy and quick. And now you're like, okay, I'm going to talk about that I'm generous and giving. Next, I'm connecting my wow to my learning and growing experience. I know I, I got to be learning and growing in the, in the fashion of being generous and gifting because I have a sister who's um, got a disability and it really, it really impacted my development. But okay, so here's that student's thesis. One sentence, people, one sentence, please. Get focused to the dead center of the dartboard. Luckily, I now see that growing up with a sister struggling with severe anxiety helped me to enjoy caring for others because I learned how to be generously inclusive and patient. That's one sentence. It is kind of beautiful. That's not the first version of it. It's the working version of it. It doesn't actually end up in her essay. It doesn't have to, it should come through in the essay. But what I do want you to think about when you're creating your one sentence thesis is the green, that is the green highlight stuff. That's your learning and growing experience. She, she grew up with a sister with severe anxiety. But what's really awesome that she's delivering is learning how to be inclusive and patient. That's her wow factor. What school doesn't want a person who's generously inclusive and patient, right? Of course they want that. And where did it come from? And that's her story. So the next thing that we can look at, if there are no questions, Lori, let me know, is how you go about outlining once you have a thesis. Yep, we're up to date on the questions. Awesome, okay. Thank you. We're gonna talk about outlining. So important, please outline. Okay, <clears throat> that directs your content. And once you have a really good outline, you're bound for success. This is gonna look like almost every other essay you've ever had to think about when your teacher says, first, I want you to brainstorm. What we are doing here, this particular creative writing piece is trying to identify what content I wanna share and how I wanna share it. We're gonna work on structure next. So we go to outline. I have an ABC formula, breaking it down into three buckets. Then you can write, and then you're gonna revise and revise and revise. So let's look at how to outline. Bucket A, paragraph A, you can call it paragraph. It doesn't have to be a paragraph, but 
I call it paragraph because I think as an English teacher, I think in terms of paragraph A. Paragraph A is an anchor anecdote. Anchor. It anchors because it's an aha. It's a meaningful, experiential memory that informs you. Let me explain. The paragraph A anchor anecdote is a zoom in, super tight zoom in to something you're gonna show us a moment. I'm gonna use Finding Nemo as a popular movie that most people, hopefully you've seen it. I recommend it, great, it's a great time, it's a good time. Um, Finding Nemo starts with a hyper zoom in and if you can think about what's at the beginning, if we had a, a group activity and I was live, I would say, who remembers the beginning? And hopefully someone would say, we're in an anemone, we're in an anemone. That's how zoomed in we are. We are like a fish in their anemone home. And we've got Marlon, the dad, and Nemo, who's got a wonky flipper, and Coral, the mom, and we're inside their little intimate house. And this is a very brief, under five minutes, experience that is so impactful and meaningful to the story development. What we see is we've got wiggling in and out and learning how to be in an anemone. And we've got Coral and Marlon looking at their eggs. Their newborns are, are coming and we're gonna have a family. That's Coral, the mom says she's so excited. And everything looks so beautiful and idyllic. But what happens? We know what's coming is a barracuda. And Disney or Pixar, I can't remember. Um, they do very discreetly not show what we believe happens, which is that the barracuda attacks and there is no more Coral or babies. And that Nemo is brought up by Marlon and uh, they're, they, 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 they do it themselves. It's like a single parent home kind of thing. This story, if Nemo was telling the story, and he is telling the story, the story is called Finding Nemo. Nemo is telling us, this is his anchor anecdote. This is when he went through something really meaningful, really powerful, and it really impacted his development because his dad became helicopter dad, really restrictive and, and hovering. And Nemo, at this point where we get the rest of the Nemo story, he is dying to get out from underneath his dad's thumb. And he's, he wants independence so badly. So this is his story. This is Nemo's story. So it is the woo. It draws us into the, the anemone story, the anecdote, draws us into their life and explains a lot of important things that then impact the storyteller of Nemo. It's Nemo's aha. So my student, does this for her sample example. She remembers a moment of impact when her sister collapsed. The first time she had a massive over attack was during an apoplectic fit when they were getting their ears pierced. For, her, for telling her story, this mem memory was so clear to the student uh, and we went ahead and, and told that story. So what I wanna show you here, and it, it, is, her, it is her paragraph. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to read it out loud, and I hope that's okay with everybody. That way we can absorb it. This is an anecdote. The fateful day starts uneventfully. My mom is finally letting Beth, 10, and me, 8, get our ears pierced after many months of complaining to be cool like every other kid. I'm beyond overjoyed like a kid ripping open the first present on Christmas morning. We decide I will go first since I am the daredevil. Having excitedly selected my super sparkly silver studs, I assume the position in the majestic piercing throne. Blink, it's already over. Next up is Beth, and she looks extra nervous. The piercing ladies swiftly approach, bring the guns to both ears, and bam, bam, Beth has pierced ears too. But OMG, Beth just passed out cold and looks dead. My mom calls for an ambulance. The mall security arrives. The paramedics rush in. Beth is unconscious for what feels like a breathless eternity. I'm panicky, confused, and worrying. What is wrong with Beth? Hopefully you feel grabbed, you feel wooed, you wanna know what happened to Beth, you wanna know what's going on here. Some very nice writing going on. Um, I, I like that she's using good descriptors. We feel like we can picture the story. That's her paragraph A. We're gonna to move to paragraph B. So if we start in the piercing pagoda, we start in the anemone, anemone and we pull out. We get this bigger picture and backstory bucket. Zooming out, what does that look like? And I tell students, you have to orient your audience. If 
my student started at eight at the Pearson Pagoda, then five W's plus H directly connected to paragraph A. The next paragraph or bucket is, well, who are you now? What are we doing in Piercing Pagoda? When was that even relevant? Where are we now? Why are we talking about this? And how does it matter to the university? So the five W's plus H, you don't have to use all of them, of course, but they are a good rule of thumb for make sure you cover those things in B. Backstory. So what does Nemo have? We get this panorama, panorama of the Great Barrier Reef and all of its majestic splendor and beauty. It's really breathtaking as a, a, a visual. We don't have visuals for our story. We have to paint them with words. So this student, my student, goes on to say and explain her backstory, which is her family must learn new lifestyle accommodations with the disabled child. What does that look like? Here's her paragraph B. I'm sorry that the text is so small, I will read it. None of us could have known that Beth's Piercing Pagoda episode would snowball our entire family into dramatically restrictive lifestyle adjustments. We began that day with a jittery child and overnight we were living with someone with a debilitating disability and a complex combination of additional unexplained anxieties, such as a dreaded fear of public places from supermarkets to libraries. Even though Beth was older, I instinctively always felt the need to do anything in my power to help her be more comfortable, safe, and loved. The first thing I did was let my pierced ears holes close to help her avoid any frenzied sweats and hyperventilation. But due to a host of triggers, I needed to constantly adapt to help Beth remain stable. For example, I switched rooms with Beth because her room triggered additional anxiety attacks. And even still, I needed to sleep on her trundle bed for almost a year and a half until she could fall asleep without me there. Thus, Beth's extreme anxieties influenced my development because adaptations to calm her were part of my family's typical life. The unexpected upsides are equally profound. Beth and I are exceptionally close, and I learned many beautiful lessons about helping others. That's her backstory. Then we move into C. See, the final bucket, you've got to connect the anecdote and the backstory to concentrate how you show your wow, your assets, values, skills, and interests. How does my student show that she's very good at dealing with anxious people and she's very intuitive and inclusive? Let's look. I've highlighted in red some, some elements I think I'll mention are worth looking at again. Paragraph C, <clears throat> adjusting and helping ensure those around me are comfy and happy have become second nature to me. Those are her assets. To bring my skills to my community, I'm involved with the peer mediation club comprised of well-rounded leaders and facilitators who promote school unity in a positive school climate through conflict resolution and mentoring. Notice she's defining what peer mediation club is. That's for the benefit of the reader. On the first day of school, we are assigned a specific refreshment who we mentor throughout the year. Of particular importance is the first week of school when freshmen are overwhelmed and stressed about starting high school. While I was showing my group around school, I noticed one freshman, Julia, who was anxious. Julia was only capable of nervously looking into her hoodie. So I made a point of striking up a chat. I made it my mission to seek Julia out. And over time, she did find friends, learn her way around school, get to know her teachers. A huge benefit was the friendship we built because she knows I'm always there for her. I'm confident and proud to be able to say my upbringing and sensitivity to knowing how to help an anxious person made a giant difference to Julia and countless other students. So Imho, who really needs sparkly studs when instead one can help an anxious kid to calm down and smile. Those are her skills in practice. Those are her skills being meaningful. Not that she cured cancer, but that she's doing something of purpose that shows her qualities and character. So really briefly to tie that together for you, paragraph A, anecdote, sister has scary crippling panic attack at the mall. B, her backstory, family lived to learn with a member of chronic and profound anxiety. And then C, she joined the peer mediation club to reach other kids struggling, helping others to navigate through high school more comfortably, finding friends, building confidence. She wants to become a nurse, which adds up, it makes sense. 
and schools will like it. And they did. Okay. Lori, do we have any questions before we look at some writing and revising content? I think we're good. Holy mackerel, I'm gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. All right, you have reminding you, 650 words. That essay that I just read was under 650 words. I think it was like 630 something. To woo, draw them in. Fun read about you as a groovy kid. And wow, jazz hands. This kid has so much to offer at our university. That's what you want the admissions people to say. All right, reminding you of the goals, only three things really to focus on. Who are you? What are you caring to share? What's the insight you want them to see? Like that diamond with many faceted sides, you get one entry point to let that light come and reflect, reflect, what, ugh, refract all around to create light in a bottle, lightning in a bottle. So who are you? Number two, what is your asset, value, interest, or skill? What is your wow? And then did you do a well-crafted story, a well-crafted essay? So I don't think we're going to have any questions from that because that was pretty brief. That was a recap. I want to talk about up-leveling with panache. And these are tips and tricks for content. And then that's your number one element, what you have to say. And then more stylistic, grammatical, mechanical, and stylistic strategies to think about once you've done the writing. So here's a bonus up level for your panache. By the way, panache, I love this word. It means flamboyant confidence, flourish in style, manner, or action, stylistic swagger. I'm proud to say that my daughter um, did this drawing and this was her expression of panache that shows how complicated we can all be, but we can be ourselves elegantly and beautifully in our own way. So you do you, you do your panache. So let's look at the content things to think about. Checklist, if you will. Wow factor must sing forth. I feel like you probably are getting that hint throughout this presentation. Yep. Number two, the essay's opener, the first 30 seconds, can make it or break it, whether or not you make it into a successive pile of keep that kid. I like that kid. Who is that kid? So think about your first entry point, opening lines. It really matters that they're very well crafted and they're clear and engaging. And that brings me to number three, to title or not to title. Um, my student's title was Super Sparkly Smiles and it really reflects reflected her character. And it's super short. <laughs> There's the word super again. I also like it because it's got sibilance and alliteration, which are fun to say. Um, and, it, and it's short. Oh, another S word. So uh, you don't have to use a title. Out of 100 kids, how many bother to use a title when you don't have to? I don't know, 10, 11? <gasps> if you don't have to, kids are like, good, I want to. That means if you do have a really great title, you will stand out of the crowd. However, a bad title will also make you stand out of the crowd, but not in a good way. So be careful with titling. That's often a question kids have for me. A reminder to avoid cliches like the plague, but I'm fun. Um, yeah, don't use cliches. They do not do you any favors and the admissions people are so tired of them. So that's something I do want you to recognize. Don't do that. And the fifth thing is don't forget with your content, describe and show, describe and show. Grammatically and mechanically, I like to have my students think about removing lazy verbs and nouns. The verb to get, the laziest verb ever. You can get to the moon, you can get a degree, I can get a sip of water. There is probably almost nothing that you can't get. Therefore, lazy verb, choose something else. I can. I can absorb a delicious drink of water. I can fly to the moon. You can do it, you can do it. Just don't use to get. Similarly, words like experience and things are wildly overused. So any chance that you can try to come up with a better way to say that. Similarly, try to limit your use of pronouns. Pronouns are beautiful because in dialogue, they replace a noun and that makes for efficient conversation. I like it so much. Oh, hand me some of that. Ooh, this is, this one's good. 
all of those are pronouns, but what we really want are the nouns instead. Remember that you want your reader to not have to work to think what you're referencing. So try to avoid pronouns. This, that, these, those, this, I want some of those. Again, avoid, use the noun. Also watch your use of it, his, her, who, what, label it, give the noun. These are easy fixes. A picture is worth a thousand words. Here's the proof for wanting this to be shown through your writing. Think of a book you love. And when you do, in kind of this metaphysical way, your brain opens up an entire universe to that beautiful book that you love. And in it are people and places and plot lines, such complexity and amazing things happen when we do this. And we love to, to think about it. And all of that is because someone is an excellent writer and crafted a story with a lot of beautiful description to help you visualize because we are visual people, cave paintings people. We like to put it up on the wall. We wanna see it and that really imprints us. So your child's essay, the more that you can think of showing through examples and specifics, the more memorable and visual it will be to the audience and they will enjoy it. All right, Lori, I'm about to go into the final stretch. Are we on questions? Let me check the chat. I think we are good. I think people are holding those questions till the end. <laughs> okay, here we go. Revision and feedback. If there's always a chance to make it better, let's do revision and feedback. Um, for revision, I want you to think about these five things to up-level, it's, it's more up-level panache. In media rest, fancy Latin term means in the middle of things. Your anchor anecdote is an opportunity to put us in the middle of things, but it needs to be short. So when we talk about buckets, A bucket, B bucket, C bucket, under 200, around 200, and that gives you 250 to show how your awesomeness is installed in your community. So you can't start your story with, I was born in Philadelphia in 2005, snooze. Try to get in media rest, try to get in the middle of things, try to get that immersive experience at, your, at the beginning of the essay. Tone, not too sad, not too happy. Too sad means you probably need a little uh, therapeutic help too happy, you sound kind of jerky, uh, really braggy, no one likes that guy. So just watch that you don't go too extreme in your tone. Um, I tell kids, you're really gonna be in first person. Tell me the story and, and you tell it, you be you, use I. Often we talk about using the present tense, especially when you're doing your paragraph A and also your C. Um, you're in the present tense, which you're unused to, not used to doing. We, we tell our stories in the past because they happened, but now you are writing for an audience and they wanna hear it in the, in the now. That makes it immediate and uh, alive. So try to use the present tense when you can, when it makes sense. And then you've heard me say this before. I'm, I, I love to repeat, apparently. Be as descriptive as possible. Think about it. You've got five senses, draw on them vibrant adjective adverbs, uh, nouns and verbs, and visuals, like our friends, the simile and metaphor. Instead of saying, my brother, such a slob, I would say, my brother is messy, like Oscar the Grouch. And you can picture it. You just did. You saw Oscar the Grouch. You now know what my brother looks like. But That helps with allusions that are cultural. That helps your audience also connect with you. So Simile and metaphor can be very powerful. Last tips, do not abuse Webster's Dictionary or thesaurus, but do use precise words and description. The aim here is for effortless flow. It's like you want your audience, the admissions person, to feel like they're in a lazy river float and they're enjoying this ride and they don't have to work very hard to understand where are you going with this? Why are you talking about that? Who's this person? What are they doing here? What is the takeaway? It is truly an opportunity for you to do all that work for them so that they feel enlightened and refreshed and engaged, almost like you've had a conversation with them and they loved your story. The essay test. I tell kids it comes down to these four words. How good is your essay? Who, what, where, and how. 
So number one, does it say who you are? Not that you were born in Philadelphia in 2005, but who you really are. Who are you in here? It's like speed dating. When you're looking at someone across the table, you don't talk about the fact that you're born in Paoli or you're born, whatever, or you live in X, Y, and Z space. They wanna know about you, what makes you tick. So tell us who you are. Number two, what is your asset value, quality, and interest? Your wow factor. What are you bringing to campus? Where have you manifested, employed, or enacted your wow? That's your paragraph C. Where have you used these skills? You can't just say, oh, you're gonna love me. I have a musical, magical rainbow unicorn. And that's why I should be accepted to your fabulous college because the college is gonna say, show me. It's a dog and pony show. Walk that around and bring it to me. And if you cannot, then you're not substantiating that you have those skills and gifts. And that's not good. You need to show, 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 show. And number four, how have you evolved? That will come through in your essay. These questions, who, what, where, how, often come through without being explicit. Sometimes we use explicit expression, not always. It doesn't have to, if you've done it well in the storytelling, it certainly doesn't have to. So that's your essay test, those four questions. When you're looking at your revision, polish multiple times. You can lean in on people who you know well, here's a list of them. But remember, too many cooks in the kitchen can complicate things. So what I say to students when you're looking for feedback is this, target helpful people through asking for written and directed constructive criticism. Because this essay is a uniquely functioning creative writing project asking you to sell yourself. And that is not like any other academic writing really. We, we, we generally don't study creative writing. We do expository, information, informational and persuasive. So this is creative. All right, what do we do for that? I have a little help form for you. These are the considerations that I use, these five questions. This is my feedback form. And you want someone to actually write their responses so that they really meditate on the question. So number one question, does this sound like the best version of me? Does this reflect a real slice of the real me? Please comment. Number two, is it clear I have something to wow you with and offer my university? Please be specific. Do I show or employ my wow through details that you can picture? Please be specific. Did I learn and grow from an experience? Please comment. And lastly, do I help you know me by showing with specifics that engage you and make you want to know more, make you want me on your campus, the real me? Okay, I'm not going to read this. Don't worry. I know this is a crowded screen and I debated about what to do to give you a student sample. So what I'm going to do, this was the before. The student came to me and said, in my English class, they made us write a college essay and I don't like it and I need a new one, but it has stuff, some stuff that I think is good. I don't know. So what I want to point out is what's in yellow. Some of the language, I am stubborn, the I'm right girl. And then it definitely is not my best quality, but at least it means I will fight for what I believe and that I do. Okay. And then we go to, I am transparent. You change your face before I slap you, girl. All right. I know. I heard that laughter. Um, yeah, I'm going to say we need to repackage this in order to get the assets to be more palatable. So I'm going to bring you down to the blue with the sparkly star down there. My life is a battlefield and I am at constant war with myself. I know it gets better. I beat myself up trying to meet society's expectation of how the perfect girl should look and act, but finally learn to be comfortable with who I am. Ooh, getting interesting. During my freshman year of high school, I was diagnosed with binge eating disorder. And she goes on to describe. Take a look at the last line in blue. Because of what I went through, and here's the good stuff. I am able to understand and care for others in a way that I know will benefit me for my future career in medicine. Ah, ah. That's what the colleges are interested in. Tell me more. And she did. And the after, 
I have it blocked into colors. I know it's not pretty. And I know this is a lot to digest. What I wanna look at is the blue at the bottom. Paragraph A is an anchor anecdote. Actually, we could read that really quickly because I think we have enough time. In February, 2017, she fought back tears as she greeted me. I quietly snatched the mysterious Baptist hospital paper spilling out of her purse. My heart sank. Immediately, I thought of her recent cancer struggle. I held the results of several tests my mother quietly did to check her health. I thought to myself, I am killing her. The stress I had put mommy through for the past three years could apparently result in a cancerous relapse. This was the moment I realized I had to take control of my life again and probably save us both. Uh, we're just going to read it. That's her anchor anecdote, a very brief moment of time that shook her. This is her backstory. B. In eighth grade, my mom was the first to notice my weight gain, but I, but I brushed it off as no big deal. In a year, brushing it off turned into 45 pounds. For two more years, I had the same 3 a.m. discussion with myself, promising to be better tomorrow. Tomorrow would come, and the promise would be devoured in golden Oreos. Shame fueled my unhealthy secret, driving my parents, especially my mother, literally sick. During these turbulent three years, I visited over 25 doctors and had blood drawn multiple times as my parents tried to figure out why I gained weight if I wasn't eating. Binging was taking over my life. Finally, one day, a doctor suggested I go to therapy because I was perhaps lying about my eating habits. Therapy was apparently the only way I was going to get better. And then my mom's medical scare, the wake up call. I had to see my disorder was hurting my family for me to get help and heal. That's backstory. Here's what she did about it. Why would someone hide a disorder robbing them of their dignity and hurt their loved ones? Overcoming my binge eating disorder transformed me into the strong, helpful, and independent woman I am because I now understand it is okay to ask for help. There is immense value in failing and never giving up. Inner strength and knowledge are beautiful and hard-won prizes. At 16, I was diagnosed with binge eating disorder. With the help of therapy and family, I dedicated myself to getting healthy. After realizing my battle was within, I be overcame the disorder and learned to be comfortable in my own skin. As a show of faith and growth, every six months, I insist mommy lets me come with her to her oncology wellness checkups. I have a vastly improved compassion for the importance of health, and I know the critical need we all have for kindness and support when we face difficulties. I understand and care for others because I have undergone a journey of resiliency to achieve what I know will benefit my future patients as I pursue a career in medicine. I hope that wasn't too much or too long, but it shows how very, very far a student can go even when they have the germs of good ideas. When you tell a story, a little anecdote, let me give some backstory, let me show you my skills. Same as super sparkly smiles. All right, I kind of like some, here's some parting thoughts and resources. If you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Mwah, this is beautiful. Simply, simply is the key. Let's see. Oh, uh, questions, Lori, before I go on? Um, we actually do have a question. And Ruby. the question is from Daniel, do you have a document with creative verbs and nouns? I am sure that I do. And I know those exist online. And Daniel, that is an excellent place to go for pinging around in a thesaurus kind of way for other words other than things or experience or even better verbs that are really active. My basic suggestion would be, even though I don't have that ready for you, I know you can do a Google search. And if you look up active verbs for resume, that's a great place to start because there are definitely lists out there. I've helped kids write their resumes um, that give you great alternative verb uh, options for things to make them more jazzy, snazzy, panache, not a word, um, more unique, descriptive. Uh, I can look up that resource and Laura, Laura, I will have to look um, at how to make that available. I can probably add that to our document. Oh, great. Thank you. And we also have another uh, question from Raquel. Um, she says, so topics like depression, anxiety, et cetera, are okay. I thought that even though so many kids have these issues that maybe colleges don't want to hear about them in the essay. And that is an excellent, Raquel, thank you. Um, that is a, a long debated and over years debated discussion point. And my feeling, and it comes from having looked at this intellectually within groups who talk about it openly. If a student has truly undergone something dramatic 
which would fall under the category of mental health and can be in a better place now and can speak with confidence, joy, strength of where their journey has brought them and they're in that better place, that's a very compelling story. The key is making sure that you approach the topic delicately and with the correct tone so that the student comes across as competent, confident, and stronger than before. So it's not so simple a discussion point, but I have actually seen quite a number of kids. It's not surprising in this, especially post COVID world, that we all are dealing with more mental health issues than we could have maybe imagined. That's pretty fair to say, I guess. And to that end, if a student has made a journey that is applaudable, that is um, rewardable, that really shows an evolution, that could be a beautiful story. Thank you. So we're all, right. all caught up. Okay, I'm gonna go forward. I like to tell kids there's no thing is no such thing as great writing, only great rewriting. The groans ensue, but it's true. Rewrite, rewrite, rewrite. Remember that this is your child's thumbprint. What an opportunity. Fourth or fifth most important thing the admissions counselors generally turn to to evaluate whether they want your kid or you personally, if you're a student. Show me. Show me your wow. Um, two great books, dun, 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 called Jesse Essentials. This is Ethan Sawyer. Um, highly recommend it. Love it. Love him. Um, Conquering an admissions essay. This is Gelb. Also love him. Uh, I don't have that handy. I don't know. My copy's upstairs, I guess. But anyway, those are great places to go. Uh, there's lots of stuff online, but if you're into reading and you really want to dive in, like I do, those were good resources. So this sheet or slide has a lot of handy links that'll be available to you. The two different library, of course, will have this posted. Um, I have a website that you're welcome to frequent uh, with a, a feedback section. You can communicate through me with me there. You can Gmail me, most of you did. And thank you, most people were really respectfully helpful and gave me the information of their child's name, grade, age, school, um, so that I could have an, a better understanding of who my audience is. I also have a Facebook page that I post updates. Sometimes I put humorous cartoons there. Um, information that's general about the college essay, of course. I also am a tutor, so anything relatable, it's all there. And the college essay guy. This particular link at the bottom of the page is linking you to the personal statement, this essay challenge. So that alone has so many links. It's beautiful. It's such a great resource. Um, and I give him so much credit and appreciate his talents. Highly recommend. Um, for example, I have this college prep timeline for you. And if you can notice the college essay in the middle and the triangle for juniors and seniors, this is a great also in the links that I'm about to give you. This is a great resource if you wanna see, uh, if you like this kind of graphic, there are a lot out there. I just happen to be a big fan and I like this one. But the college essay, off to the right tells us first identify your content, then structure it diligently and beautifully and logically. And then do my details work? And is it telling a beautiful story that's memorable? Here is where you're gonna find resources, the hot links to the discussion point, that the NACAC rankings, the values exercise that was, I think Raquel asked for earlier, feelings and needs exercise that helps you structure your content. There's also a video link that is Ethan giving his lecture on it. Um, the great essay test that's called Essay Guys. I have a slightly different one, but this one's great too. And then that graphic that I just showed everybody, the junior and senior year timeline of what you can do and when. It's not too late to start. You're gonna be okay, but you're gonna have to hustle if you're just starting now. But hopefully this helped. Hopefully I gave you some great advice to feel comforted by the fact that you can go somewhere to start some tools and resources that will help. And how am I on time? 8.04, hooray. All right, <laughs> Lori, we, um, go ahead. But we do have some questions. Um, awesome. So Julia is asking, what if the student does not have any dramatic experience or the student is just boring or gloomy? 
<laughs> yep. Um, everybody has something they like to do. And I have seen this, as a matter of fact, super sparkly smiles when I had that student before me, one of the reasons why it was so memorable is because she felt she was so boring. She had, you know, she, she really played it down. Um, she didn't think her story was worth telling. Uh, I disagree and she got into some beautiful colleges. So there you are. If you have a grumpy kid or you have a kid that says I haven't lived through anything, remember that you don't have to have cured cancer and saved a kid from a, a well hiked Mount Everest. You need to look at what you have inside of you that is part of your character. Ask your, say to the student, ask your best friend what they really like about you. Ask your, whoever you're close to. Sometimes it's your grandparent. Sometimes it's your parent. Sometimes it's not your parent. Best friend is a good, good place to go to. Turn to that resource and say, hey, I need help. What, what do you think's my selling point? What, what's great about me? And, and usually between really good friends or in a good relationship, someone will help you with that. And that value is exercise. Um, you need to look inside and ask yourself, what am I offering to a college? And then you need to look at how you got that skill, how you got that asset value, um, that wow. So meditating on what is great about you. What is your awesomeness? You need to write about something. I had another student who really, whew, she, she really didn't have, she really didn't have something to go on. And um, she never joined a club. She never had a job. She never, she didn't do a lot, but she had a, she enjoyed working out. She had a trainer and she, that was her story. And she talked about how she really made progress with her weights. And that was what was meaningful to her. Did she become Miss USA? No, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. It's not about extremes. It's about what you're proud of. What's that facet that lets light in to you what, that you really love to do? Okay, I had um, someone asking, uh, can we get the slideshow electronically? And they also pointed out we have to spell Tradifferin Library's website correctly. We must have that wrong. Oh, goodness. I know. That's probably, oh, I didn't notice it, and I work here. <laughs> <laughs> that that word is the bane of my existence. I honestly, I can't believe it didn't get caught, but thank you. Uh, only human right here. <laughs> um, I will fix that. I will fix that right away. Making a note to myself, <laughs> fixing. Um, yeah, so Lori, are we posting this slideshow? Is that what we're doing? Yeah, I mean, if you'd like to, I was gonna say I could post all the links on- um, Perfect. The website, but if you want me to, post the slideshow, I'm, I'm happy to post that too. We'll figure out a way to get it on the team page of the Tradifferin Library website. Cool. Cool. We're, we're going to share. Great. And, and if there's something specific, you can reach out. I'm happy to share what I, I have a lot. I've been doing this for a while and I, I encounter resources like the student who asked, do we have a, uh, I think it was Daniel again, do, do we have a valuable uh, resource for finding better verbs? Like that, that's kind of thing that I do have. I just don't have it for today, but, um, and it's, and it's something you can easily find, but that's the kind of thing I can help with. Well, we're getting a lot of questions, um, but like right in between the questions, we got a nice thank you from Dana. So, but let me move on to the questions. Um, so Bobby says the example essays you gave were written at least partly in past tense. Is that okay? Mm. That's a good catch. So in being a coach and in being a supporter for kids as they're doing their thing, I try not to over, over edit. I try not to over manhandle. Um, there will be times where I'm gonna discuss, we could really change and put this into a better tense or the, the word you're choosing here isn't what, or the tone needs adjusting. At the end of the day, when I, in my role as a college essay coach, I, I do not, I, I, I must find a, a comfortable limit of how much I want to construct versus what is the student. And that, therein comes the voice and the authenticity. And uh, I would polish everything to the point of high shine from space if I had my way. But sometimes it's time, sometimes it's energy, sometimes it's focus, and sometimes it's voice. So I try not to overdo it, but I like your catch. 
Okay, let's see. The next one, we have somebody saying thank you. Um, somebody says this was great. Thank you. We have another thank you. Um, somebody says great job. Ben took away some great takes here. We will be in touch soon. Um, somebody says thank you for everything. Uh, let's see. Thanks so much. I can't even keep up with all the thank yous and have a nice <laughs> oh, evening. Oh, guys, um, thank you. Thank you, Carrie. This has all been so insightful and helpful. Amazing presentation and tips. Carrie, thanks so much. Some really great tips and guidance here. Um, so we are really getting a lot of compliments <laughs> in the question portion. I love positive the, karma boomerangs. Um, <laughs> So somebody says, is there any way to send you my essay? I know you work with students as a business. Um, let's see. So, and your contact information is on your website. Let's it see. is. Thank you. And so it's much. on the screen in case it helps. Let's see. Thank you so much. The essay seems less scary now. Um, okay. Someone has a question. If a student has a rough draft, are you available to review? Do you do that sort of thing? Yes, I do. Um, the best results come from a collaboration. All right, so um, sometimes, sometimes people just wanna read through. I am not an editing service. So if you're interested in having feedback, I can give feedback. The best, the best give and take is gonna be in, in a Zoom or in a, uh, an exchange. If I get a student essay in an hour, with the student present, whether we're Zooming, because I've Zoomed worldwide. My farthest away student was Singapore. I think it was 11 and a half hours. Um, <laughs> it's just a crazy time trip. But anyway, so the ideal, ideal circumstances, I meet with the student and we read through together and I give feedback. And in that feedback comes strengths and weaknesses. And that's how the student knows, okay, these things are going really well, which I tried to show in that before and after essay where there's some things that I'm not so confident are gonna work for you tonally or content wise, but some things were beautiful, let's focus and do it. So yes, I do editing. Yes, I give coaching. Yes, I give feedback. Ideally it's in collaboration because if I don't know you as a person and I have no context for who you are, you won't have the benefit of getting the most genuine, useful feedback. I hope that makes sense. It does. Um, we also have someone saying this was very helpful. Thank you. This has been very insightful. So yes, this has been a wonderful presentation. Um, I've recorded it, at least I think I have. I'm not sure. <laughs> I hit the recording oh gosh, I hope button. <laughs> button. So hopefully we'll have this on our website. If you wanted to go over it again, um, you have Carrie's contact information. Wait, so wait, somebody said <laughs> that's my sister. So <laughs> that's Allison. Is wait, is, I hope that's Allison. <laughs> What's up? And then somebody said that's my BFF. <laughs> So, oh wait, Allison is on screen. Allison Juice, Allison. is that actually your sister? <laughs> it's my true, true sister. Oh, yep, okay, yep. all right, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> and then I guess also your BFF is here. Um, oh Anne gosh, has to send to everyone that's oh my BFF. gosh, Anne in Massachusetts. Anne. So <laughs> this is like, this is your life, I love it. Um, <laughs> So I guess like one of my comments, this isn't a question, but like, well, I just want to make one comment, like to the student who said, well, what if, and I'm assuming it's a student, what if you're just ordinary? What if you're just gloomy? And I always say to kids like that say, I'm just, like to take just out of your vocabulary. Like you're not just, you know, kids use it all the time. Like uh, I wrote a paper and they'll be like, oh, it's just, you know, this, like lose the word just. There's nobody like you. You're not just anything. Exactly. Thumbprint. Yeah. You have a thumbprint. It's unique. So um, hopefully you'll do that exercise that Carrie said to go to your best friend, go to your parents, like go to, go to people that know you and, and get them to describe your qualities. Because they don't see you as just ordinary. Exactly. I guarantee it. Um, this should be a celebration of you. Yes. And 
so okay so does anybody else have questions or comments um we'll try and get the recording up and this was wonderful carrie thank you so much i i feel very honored to have the guests that have come uh it's a pleasure to share what I do. I truly love it. It's like being a travel agent for honeymooners because I am so excited for those kids to go and do what, what is fun, what is university. So it it's a pleasure. I, I always love it. I really do. Great. Well, thank, thank you, Lori. So much. So it looks like we're going to go ahead and end unless anybody else has like that stray question. Um, <laughs> I think we're good. And awesome. Um, you know how to get in touch with Carrie. If you do have questions, I'll go ahead and make sure we have those two essay books you mentioned that we get them for the library if we don't have them all. Oh, yeah. Yes. College Essays Essentials and then Conquering the College of Missions Essay. Um, we'll get awesome. them in. And oh, let's see. Um, Raquel says, really great. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate the the positivity is all about the karma boomerang and I'm all for that. I love to put it out there and I love it when it comes back because we all need affirmation. Yes, we do. And I can affirm this was a wonderful presentation. <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody realizes, but the way I ended up contacting Carrie, um, we had a woman, Marilyn Calabrese, and she did the essay night for years. I love Marilyn. Um, she passed away and it was really, really sad. Um, and I was kind of like at a loss, like what, what are we gonna do to keep this going? And then I saw all the comments on Carrie, someone had brought up on Facebook, they needed someone to help their student with an essay and I heard great stuff. So that's how I got in touch with Carrie. Woohoo! So thank you so much. And um, I'll see everyone at the library. And hopefully, I <laughs> and Laura will be out. in touch. We'll work on getting all this together so yeah. that it can be shared. Is, if there's any um, like Zoom experts here, what do I do now with the recording? Do I have to do anything? <laughs> I hit the record button. And hopefully I said it goes to, to, the, the to the cloud. Is there anything else I have to do? <laughs> I think we will uh, have to troubleshoot that because yeah. we are not experts in that realm no, but was, we will tap the we can ask sigus maybe i know sigus are you here we need your help <laughs> let's see i don't we'll know work it out yeah we will we will figure that out okay so all right everybody go ahead and end and good night um wait someone said ha ha oh somebody said ha ha that's me who posted on the 2023 facebook group well thank you pam because you made this happen um, I really appreciate that you had complimented Carrie and we found her. So thanks I'm everybody. Um, all right. Good night, everyone. Good night, Carrie. Thanks. Ciao.